Hi, I'm Nick from the Barrel Outlet, and today we're going to discuss how to install a Remage barrel on a Remington Model 700. Starting here, we're assuming that you have already removed your old barrel from your 700 and that will take an action wrench and a barrel vise to do because the barrels are screwed in pretty darn tightly. But after you get the barrel out and you have your new barrel has arrived, the first thing you want to do is get the receiver. You want to clean the receiver as well as you possibly can. You want to clean all the threads locking lug recesses, everything in here. We use a sonic cleaner in the shop here to do it with. You can use a toothbrush and solvent, but make sure you get everything out of the threads. You don't want old carbon, um, metal shavings, Loctite that has leaked in through the uh, scope screw holes, anything in this receiver. You wanna make sure that the threads are as clean as you can possibly get them. Uh, once you've done that, set the receiver aside and go to the barrel. When you receive the barrel, it will have been shipped to you. You want to make sure the threads are clean. You want to clean the bore. You also want to very carefully clean the chamber. Uh, take a flashlight, look inside the chamber, and you want to make sure that you clean the shoulders particularly. If there's any kind of foreign material laying on the shoulders, you will get a false headspace reading. And since the range of the headspace is between three and seven thousandths, depending on the caliber of the cartridge, um, you may have some real trouble. You want to make sure the shoulders are clean, the threads are clean. Um, before you screw the barrel in, you want to lubricate the barrel. I use rig gun grease. You want to lubricate the threads on the barrel to make sure that it screws in easily to the receiver and doesn't gall. Before you go any further, make sure that the remage nut, that you have to buy the remage nut separately from the barrel, make sure that the remage nut screws onto the barrel and screw it all the way on and up. You also want to make sure that the Remington recoil lug, you can either use the one that came with the gun or they have aftermarket replacements which are a bit thicker and which are shaped slightly differently. Make sure this is an original Remington recoil lug. You want to make sure the recoil lug slips over the threads and back. Now, um, the headspace gauges. There's uh, a small controversy as to whether you need a go and a no-go gauge. I use a go and a no-go gauge. Um, I always like to have the proper tools. You can measure things with calipers or with a micrometer. And they'll both be pretty close. A micrometer is as close as you can get. Um, I've seen a lot of people who use a piece of scotch tape on the go gauge to use it for a no-go. Um, the tape when you put it on is compressible and you don't get the same hard feel as you do when you're closing the bolt on the no-go. You don't get the same hard feel as you do with the steel no-go gauge. When you buy headspace gauges, make sure that you buy the go and the no-go from the same manufacturer at the same time. This will prevent any kind of tolerance stacking, anything weird if you buy the gauges from two different people. If you have, you know, you have a go gauge for a .30-06 and you buy one later, make sure you buy them from the original manufacturer. If you can't determine from the gauge, if it's so used that you can't determine who made it, buy a new set. Headspace gauges cost around 30 bucks each and uh, 60 bucks is a small price to pay to do something right. Um, I use in the shop, for the nut wrench, the remage nuts are cut to use a uh, Savage action wrench. This is a Wheeler action wrench. 
and it's pretty much standard for what they sell online. Um, they're pretty thin, and uh, in the shop, this will work fine if you're just doing one every now and then or just one. In the shop, we use uh, Brownells action wrenches. Brownells, to fit their action wrench, also makes a set of blocks that will fit the Savage Nut, and it completely supports the, spl the splines cut in the action nut. If you use these, you need to make sure that a bit of the nut is sticking out so that you don't scar anything. And but this will hold the nut much tighter than this. If the nut's on extremely tightly, this will pull it off, where this will move metal on the nut and you, in the splines. And you really don't want to do that because it makes for a messy looking job. Now we're ready to grab the barrel to hold it. Um, if you're doing this at home, you can grab the barrel in the vise. Do not grab it just in the steel jaws. Um, make yourself either wood jaws to hold the barrel or some kind of padded vise jaws so that you can hold the barrel. Basically, all we're doing with the barrel, we just want to hold it still so we can use both hands to install everything else. You can use your vise at home with proper vise jaws. I'm going to just grab this in the barrel vise. Normally, when you remove a uh, barrel, shouldered barrel from a receiver, you're grabbing the barrel up as close to the junction, as you, to the shoulder as you possibly can. Since all I want to do is hold this still here, what I'm going to do is stick the barrel in and just grab it about halfway up. All I need to do is to hold it still and make sure that it doesn't twist and turn or go anywhere on me and I'm going to tighten it up in the barrel vise. I don't have to even have it that tight, actually. I just need it to hold still. Now, once I've done that, I'm going to take masking tape and just put a couple wraps of it around the barrel here. And that'll do the trick. And I'm going to slip the Wheeler action, the Wheeler nut wrench over there and set it there. I just taped it so that I wouldn't ding the barrel because I don't want to do a bunch of cleanup later. Now, I'm taking the rig gun grease. I'm greasing the threads. Like I said before, we're doing that just to prevent any kind of galling on the threads. We don't want the threads to be galled. And it, when you take this, it will also prevent anything untoward happening if you happen to get um, Loctite, when you're Loctiting the scope screws on, that will prevent the Loctite from adhering to the barrel itself and save you a lot of trouble when you're putting the thing back together. If you have to remove the barrel for any reason. Now, when we do this, the first thing we're going to do is to install the nut, and we've already made sure the nut goes on all the way. And we're going to screw the nut up to the end of the threads. You don't have, need to tighten it when it reaches the end of the threads. All you want to do is feel it stop and then quit. 
There. Next, we're going to put on the recoil lug. And at this point, we're going to screw the action in. And we get the action started. And you always want to be careful and go slow. If for any reason this stuff does not thread on, it, the recoil lug won't go over the barrel, stop immediately. Do not force anything. Um, you will be really glad that you stopped. At this point, since I've got the barrel nearly screwed on, I'm going to put the bolt in the Remington and I have removed the ejector from this Remington bolt. I have not removed the extractor. These extractors are either clipped in or riveted in. And if you remove one of these, a lot of times you cannot reuse this extractor unless you're extremely careful in removal. And so it's not necessary to remove the extractor in a Remington. Um, and I would suggest if you're doing this at home that you don't do it because it'll save you buying another part. And also it'll save you from learning how to form the Remington extractors to get them back in the gun when you replace it. But what we're going to do is we're going to screw the action in gently until the nose of the bolt touches the bottom of the 705 counter bore. And I need to screw that a couple more threads. There we go. And there it is right there. The bolt is held in place and you don't want to screw this in tight so you just back it off about a quarter of a turn and the bolt moves again. The face of the bolt was touching the, seven, the bottom of the 705 counter bore in the barrel. Now what we'll do next is we'll take the go gauge We're going to hook the go gauge underneath the extractor so it's held onto the bolt face and while closing the bolt gently guide it into the chamber. We need to come back a bit. There. Now we screw the barrel on until we just feel with the bolt in the down position the go gauge on the front of the bolt we feel the bolt come up solidly and you don't want to tighten it after this point. All you want it to do is touch. It's not that tight as you can see. Then we're going to move the nut just to hold the recoil lug gently in place. Now on a Remington, on a Savage, there's a notch in the receiver right here, a corresponding button on the recoil lug. That will locate your recoil lug in the proper position for you. On a Remington, there is no such thing. I use the bottom of a Brownells action wrench that I use to unscrew the action from shouldered barrels. I have a quarter 28 screw, which is the Remington guard screw size. And you see I can move this. The Remington action wrench has a cut in it, which will automatically align the recoil lug in the proper position. So I just slip that on, then I can tighten the nut. I can move the Wheeler action wrench and holding the action still, I gently start to tighten it. These don't have to be, there's been some discussion about how tight you need to get these. I just get them reasonably tight by hand. Now we can check to see we'll remove the Remington action wrench, we'll remove the quarter 28 screw. Now we can check with the no-go gauge. We gently pull this out on a Remington model 700 since the extractor is still in the bolt it will pull out the headspace gauge when you retract the bolt. On a Savage it's best to remove both the extractor and the ejector 
and the headspace gauge will stay in the chamber. You can push the headspace gauge out gently with a pin cup in your hand here. You don't want to drop the headspace gauges on the floor. Or you can put your finger here, and if you have compressed air in your shop, put your finger here and shoot a gust of air down the bore. It will blow the headspace gauge against your finger, which you've stuck through the magazine well, and then you can grab it and retract it. Now, this is the no-go gauge. We're going to take the no-go gauge. We're going to, once again, hook it underneath the extractor and carefully guide it into the chamber. There it is. You can feel the gauge is tight right here. It doesn't allow the bolt to close. The bolt is still in the high position. That means that the headspace is good on this gun. Now we want to make sure that the bolt still closes and I always like to make sure that after we've tightened it we can put the go gauge in with no resistance. So once again we're going to hook the go gauge underneath the extractor, put it in and it goes down. If you feel paranoid at all about whether or not you've done this right you're allowed to put that go and the no-go gauge in as many times as you feel comfortable with. But this rifle here needs to be assembled, then it's ready to shoot. <laughs>